Welcome back. We're going to use the built-in camera on the Bolt, and then we're going to do an engrave on some leatherette, and I'm going to share the settings I use today on LaserNug. So you good folks know that it took me three months to finally hook up the camera on this Bolt. During the learning curve or the early stages, I didn't really see it as a necessity. I, I just kind of thought it was a nice-to-have item, but it's actually a need-to-have especially when you get into some weird shaped objects that you're trying to engrave. I'm just gonna do a quick video today so I can show you how easy and effective it is when you're using the camera on the bolt, especially when it comes to odd shaped materials. We're gonna be engraving leatherette for the first time. So I'm gonna share the settings I use, which I received off of the YouTube channel called Malone's Custom Designs. It's the first settings I've taken off of YouTube that actually worked great the first time I tried them without any adjustment. And then I'm gonna show you how I clean it so that you don't wipe or smudge all of that tiny black residue into the porous leatherette material. So like anything that you engrave on your workspace, you need to make sure that it's square or it's at least perpendicular or parallel to the X gantry. Otherwise, it's not gonna be a straight engrave or it's not gonna come out level. So in this case, we're gonna use a bottle opener today. And I have a number of these different small little sheets with grids on them. I'm not sure what the right name is. Actually, it's my daughter's. She uses this for embroidery and heat press, and she has a number of them in different sizes. This one works out great because it's gonna allow me to square it up to the work table, and it's gonna allow me to place my object and make sure that it's perpendicular and parallel, and that it's gonna be square when I go to engrave it. Another benefit of using one of these sewing grids is if you're not sure if you're square or parallel, just line up the laser with one of the grid lines, and then run the laser down and see if it follows it right to the bottom. And if it does, you know you're square. Okay, let's jump into light burn. Okay, camera's connected. I have my bottle opener in place. I'm gonna come over here to the right hand side and I'm gonna click on camera control. If you don't see your camera here in the window at the top, just open the drop down and click on it and it'll show up for you. Because quite often when I start it, it doesn't show it connected until I click it. I'm gonna come here to update overlay and I'm gonna click that and that should, as it did, give me a view of what is here on my workspace and there's our bottle opener. I'm gonna throw my other logo in there. So I'm gonna come up here to the top. I'm gonna to click import and there's my logo. I've already sized it as I've done a few of these. So I have it saved. I'm gonna grab my logo and I'm gonna drop it into the center. Remember the camera uses absolute coordinates. So if we come over here to the right, you'll see it's already defaulted to absolute coordinates. I don't need to touch anything, except I wanna make sure that I've got the right engrave layers. So I'm gonna to come to the middle of my tabs here, cuts and layers, I'm gonna click it. I have a fill layer, which is great. I'm gonna come down to the bottom to my library and I'm gonna share with you the settings that I got from Malone's Custom Designs, which work great. I've already set it in here as leatherette. I'm gonna click that, open it up. I want rawhide. This happens to be light brown, but rawhides will do the trick. I have a cut layer and an engrave layer for the leatherette. And here are the settings for my engrave layer. It's 800 millimeters per second, 20 and 20 min and max, no air, and 300 lines per inch. In case you're cutting leatherette, I'm gonna go under here, under my cut settings, and this is for 0.9 millimeter thick rawhide or leatherette. My cut settings, 20 millimeters per second, 50 and 50 for max and min, high air, and it's line fill mode, excuse me, line mode, and that's it. I'm gonna click back on my engrave settings. I have my fill up here in my cuts and layers window highlighted. And I'm just gonna come down here to the right side where it says assign, and I'm gonna click assign. Now you can see the numbers were already set because I did this just before I did the video. And that, it's literally that simple. I come down to the bottom, I click on laser. Everything's good, I press send. I'm gonna send the file to the bolt. There we go. The file is right here at the bolt, ready to go. And since the camera is using absolute coordinates, 
by default, I don't have to try to set an origin. It already knows exactly where it needs to run the, the design. I can, of course, frame it. And as you can see, it already knows where to frame it. I've already auto-focused. Let's run the job. Now that's a nice engrave. So let's clean it. So whether you're purchasing sheets of leatherette, perhaps you're doing patches on hats, or you're purchasing some other objects that have a leatherette to engrave, leatherette is a pretty porous material. What I found early on as I started to clean this is that because it's porous and you've got tiny minute particles of residue from the engrave, in this case black, when you go to wipe that with a leather cleaner or your LA Awesome or your power wash or whatever it is you choose to use, you're going to find that similar to other test results we've had, you're going to be cleaning up a lot of that black residue, but you're also pushing some of that tiny little dust into this porous material. And then you have a lot more work ahead of you to try to get it back out again, whether you're using a toothbrush or something else. And although you can't see it very well, I can certainly see that as much as I've tried to clean this patch, I can still see a slight haze of black in some areas around the patch. And it's just because despite how much time I spent trying to clean it, I can't get it all out. So we've gone to my new way of cleaning a lot of materials now. You got it. We're gonna hit it with the air compressor first. Get rid of as much loose residue as possible. And then all I do is I just dab my rag in water and I give it a wipe. And once that dries, it'll come back to its regular color. And there you have it. Nice, crisp, clean engrave on leatherette. I was using a two and a half inch lens on the bolt today, but I use the exact same settings for the one and a half inch lens. Those engraved settings, they'll work on leatherette generally, whether it's on an item such as this, or you're getting it by the sheet, perhaps with an adhesive on the back so you can heat press it onto hats or whatever. And the cut settings will work for your 0.9 millimeter thickness or 1 32nd of an inch. There's your rawhide, there's your light brown, and here's your leatherette patch. And if you haven't connected the camera yet, See if you can squeeze it into this week's projects. I'll put a link here. I did a video on how to connect it to your Apple computer, and I'm really happy I did, and I kind of wish I'd done it a while back. <laughs> Have a great week. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.